Topping today's news, another traffic fatality on Grand Bahama. Employees at the Public Treasury protest over promotions. The opposition continues to push for the resignation of the immigration minister. And another legendary Bahamian passes away today. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It's a pleasure to have you join us. A video of a gruesome traffic fatality made its rounds on social media over the past 24 hours as police on Grand Bahama aggressively investigate the circumstances of the country's latest traffic fatality, which claimed the life of a 45-year-old male resident of Pinehurst Drive, Freeport, Grand Bahama. According to reports, shortly before 9 a.m., a 29-year-old a male driver of a black 2017 Honda Accord was traveling west along Queens Highway when he lost control of his vehicle after trying to avoid a public transportation vehicle that was pulling off. The driver collided head-on with the victim's gray Toyota truck that was traveling in the opposite direction. The victim was subsequently transported to the Rand Memorial Hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. The Minister of Transport recently commented on the high number of traffic fatalities in country with the hopes of improved roads and more attention to driving will help reduce the number of traffic fatalities here. We want our promotions and we want it now. We want our promotions and we want it now. We want our promotions for both students. Now. Promotions. That was the sound of scores of employees at the Public Treasury Department, led by Bahamas Public Service Union President Kimsley Ferguson, protesting outside the Public Treasury building on East Street this morning. They say they need clarity on the promotion exercise for their department. This comes on the heels of a statement released by the Minister of State for the Public Service, Pia glover Rule, who disclosed that the ministry had advised of 42 of 50 files received being reviewed, processed, and forwarded to the Public Service Commission. Mr. Ferguson says those numbers are not adding up. It was indicated some time ago that the Minister of the Public Service or the Minister of State for the Public Service would have had on her desk some 150 promotions already processed. Um, by reading a press release from the Ministry of the Public Service again, we understand that it's now 42 or 40 out of 52 that have already been processed. Um, from February of last year, it was said it was 150. To date, it's now 42 out of 50. We are very concerned which of the statements are accurate because it appears as if from 16 months ago to current date, um, no processing has been taking place. Mr. Ferguson says there have been several attempts to reach out to the financial secretary, Simon Wilson, but those were unsuccessful. Now he is calling on the government, namely the prime minister, to have an audience with him so that these concerns can be ironed out. It be impossible for the public service to run without these particular individuals. Not that they're better than any other public service, but their contributions are invaluable. And yes, so yes, we, yes, we, we, we need, we are disappointed by the way in which these individuals are being treated. And we are asking the Prime Minister to please afford us the audience uh, so that we can speak with him and get an understanding of the way forward. We have on numerous occasions reached out to the financial secretary who refuses to take calls from the union. Wow. I cannot say whether it's because the prime minister had to change some of his plans that he had for these individuals because the financial secretary had planned that these persons would not benefit from the industrial agreement. He had them already excluded and the prime minister had to overrule his decision. Teresa Cunningham, a worker in the public treasury for almost 27 years, says she wants what she is rightfully deserving. I'm very angry right now. I'm trying to get my feelings together. Um, because when you devote 27 years of your life to something, I mean, that's all of my young years, you expect to see the rewards of it. Behind me and my colleagues, we're professional persons. We're adults. We're not children. We've worked hard. 
we're educated. We have bachelor's, master's. Some of yeah. these even have yeah. CPAs. Yeah. Doctor's degree yeah. as well. We're not begging. We're not, we're not trying to sit at the table or under the table for scraps and crumbs. We want what we rightfully deserve. We work very, very hard. We're passionate about what we do. Yeah. Okay. We work very, very hard for what, we, what we, we're trying to get. And it's just been too long. You're looking at 13, 14, 16, maybe even 20 years of persons who haven't moved from their positions. Wow. They're dedicated to the success of this country. Yes. And if it were not for us, it wouldn't be anybody else. They're able to operate and receive their money. Exactly. All we want is respect. We want consideration. Some of us have mortgages, we have children's, school fees and educational expenses and personal things that we want to accomplish, just like everybody else. Yeah. And so give us something to celebrate. In the statement, Minister Glover Roll noted that all financial officers who have been recommended for promotions have seen relevant processes expedited and the promotional exercise will be completed within three weeks. Mr. Ferguson says enough with the promises and it's now time for action. Free National Movement, led by party leader Michael Pintar, deputy leader Shannon Don Carteret, and their chairman Dwayne Sands, Dr. Dwayne Sands, they took to the streets on Friday morning in a demonstration to voice frustration and concerns on the matter of Immigration Minister Keith Bell conferring citizenship to three people on Saturday during a funeral service. Today's demonstration follows a protest held by the FNM at the Department of Immigration on Thursday, also calling for the minister's resignation. Mr. Pintard is also demanding an internal audit into the Immigration Department. Rage by the lack of intensity and urgency that this government is showing. We remind the public that we call for a select committee on immigration because we believe that it is important that the government protects the borders of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. We know that illegal migrants are not only coming by way of, of sea, they're also coming through the airport. And because we have a slack system of tracking who has come into our country, we have not been able to determine who has overstayed. This is why we call for the select committee to look into the issue of how many persons have come through our border whether or not we have the systems in place to track exactly where they are. Secondly, we've asked for the government to do an audit of work permits that have been issued and to see whether or not there have been any irregularities in the system in the granting of work permits. Now, as the group staked outside of Minister Bell's East Bay Street office, the minister himself made a brief appearance as he stood in the window, the opened window of his second floor office, looking down on the crowd that was chanting, Bell got to go. Come, come down, my brother. Come down. Come down. FNM Deputy Leader Shannon Don Cartwright questions who the government is working for, Bahamians or others. As we think about these 50 years of independence, as Bahamians think about their sovereignty, their birthright, their patrimony, the question is who is this government working for? And are we at the point now where citizenship is being given out on the street corners and in barbershops and under the docks? The Bahamian people are outraged at the uh, looseness at which it seems like this government operates from immigration policy and they are offended that this sacred trust that is given to the Havens has been taken for granted by this government. And so we are calling upon the government to deal with this issue the, the Bahamas is at risk for a reintroduction of polio and other diseases because the vaccination rate has gone far below 95 percent. This coming from the Pan American Health Organization and World Health Organization representative for the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands, Dr. Eldona Boyson. She encourages parents to keep up with vaccinations. So I would say we've been doing this for a long time. We are all vaccine babies. All of us here have been vaccinated. We had our childhood vaccinations. I'm far from being a baby. I'm still here, healthy, well, and I don't have any of those diseases that the vaccines prevented me from getting. So they are very safe and you really need to get your kids vaccinated. You do not want them to get polio, though there's no cure for, or measles, mumps, rubella, tetanus, pertussis. These are all serious diseases that can make your kids severely ill or even kill them. She goes on to say that one of the main reasons PAHO has learned why parents have stopped vaccinating their children is that with so many other issues in the world, they've simply forgotten about it. And so we want to encourage people and remind them. And you know, this is the 50th anniversary of independence. 
do this for the country. Let's make this a target to get back up to that 95% coverage, which gives herd immunity and protects the whole country from these very severe diseases. I'm saying that the Bahamas is at risk of reintroduction of polio okay. and other diseases right now because the vaccination rates have gone way down below 95%. And until we get them back up to 95%, we are at risk. She says vaccination is the only way that we can keep diseases extinct and out of the country. Today is National Flag Day and all governmental agencies and private institutions across the country raised the black gold and aquamarine in preparation for the 50th anniversary of independence. Chair of the 50th Independent Secretariat Ambassador Leslie Miller Bryce led the ceremony at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs this morning. Thank God that for 50 years the black gold and aquamarine flag has flown high over our nation. It has been a reminder of who we are as a people and the blessings that the Lord continues to bestow upon us. The black triangle symbolizes the strength, vigor, and force of the Bahamian people. We are an enterprising people who have successfully navigated the many challenges that our islands have faced for over the years. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Nassau Village Member of Parliament Jamal Strawn spoke to the importance of this day for all Bahamians across the archipelago. It is truly a milestone for our country as we embark upon our 50th year of independence. As we celebrate under the theme, One Nation, Our Legacy, Our Future, we cannot help but reflect on our foremothers and forefathers who would have helped and ensured that we ushered in this 50th year. I would like to thank especially the chairman of the Independence Day Secretary, the Honorable Leslie Bryce, Miller Bryce, for all of our hard work. It truly embodies what a young Bahamian can do when put to the forefront and given the reins of leadership. It also exemplifies the true essence, the Bahamian ethos. And as we go forward to celebrate July 10th, I would just like to say, one Bahamas, unified and love and service. Bahamians all over the world are encouraged to show your Bahamian pride today by wearing your 242 colors. The National Float Parade and Motorcade will take place at 2 p.m. on Saturday, followed by an all-star Bahamian concert at the Western Esplanade at 4 p.m. on Saturday. Bahamian entrepreneurs in the fishing and water sports industries will see much needed improvements based on the government's 2023-2024 fiscal budget. According to the Minister of Transport and Housing, Joe Beth Kobe Davis, this budget introduces significant reforms to the maritime industry to improve regulatory oversight and support Bahamian entrepreneurs by first leveling the playing field. For decades, there have been numerous complaints from Bahamian operating in our water sports and sport fishing industries surrounding the unfair competition from foreign vessels which were allowed to temporarily operate in the Bahamas without the payment of import taxes. Given the significant capital costs associated with the purchase of vessels, government concessions were required to enable Bahamians to have a fair chance in participating in this industry. Exactly what kinds of regulations, incentives, and opportunities Bahamians operating in the fishing and water sports industries can look forward to, the Transport Minister shared the following details. In keeping with the commitment in our blueprint for change, this budget, for the first time, will provide for water sports and sports fishing industries similar concessions and support as those given to taxi and livery tour businesses. Vessels imported into the Bahamas will pay a first-time registration fee in lieu of import duties and value-added taxes. This fee represents a significant saving for new and existing water sports and fishing operators. It is indeed a new day, Madam Speaker. The minister says in its blueprint for change, the Davis administration promised to modernize the fishing industry and to create opportunities in ocean sciences and seafaring while protecting the beaches and marine habitats. And they plan to do just that.
And finally in this segment, and finally in this segment, the Bahamas mourning the loss of another Bahamian giant, Dr. Diane Gale North Saunders, noted historian, archivist, author, and athlete, passed away today. She was just 79 years old. Dr. Saunders is known for her tireless work in establishing the Bahamian National Archives commissioned by the Ministry of Education. Upon her return home, to the Bahamas from tertiary education. She worked at the library with the Ministry of Education where she organized the records of the old Board of Education to make the first deposit in the National Archives. She served as its director from 1971 to 2004 and then director general until she retired in 2008. Other noted leadership positions included president of the Bahamas Historical Society and president of the Association of Caribbean Historians. She was also an executive member of the International Council on Archives. As an author, she penned a number of impressive books about Bahamian history. As a young athlete, Dr. Saunders was the first, along with three other women, to represent the Bahamas in an international sporting competition as a member of the relay team at the Central American and Caribbean Games in Kingston, Jamaica in 1962. Dr. Saunders was awarded the Commonwealth Honor of the Order of the British Empire, OBE, in 2003. The University of the West Indies awarded her an honorary degree in 2004. And in 2013, she was inducted into the Bahamas National Sports Hall of Fame. On behalf of the family here at JCN, we extend our deepest condolences to her family. And may she rest in peace. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.